Hey everyone, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts, number 409, Diminishing Beacons. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me today. And uh, yeah, so we have a beacon redesign. Uh, not the actual visuals of them, but how they work. So this is something that I think has probably been a long time coming. Uh, the devs even mentioned in here that this is something, at least for V, and I, I know this, I've talked to him a few times about this, uh, that... You know, this is something he's wanted to do for a long time, uh, and for reasons I'll go into in the Friday Facts, it wasn't really possible until very recently. And then Arendelle and also uh, Boss Kid had a huge hand in it. So this is uh, pretty interesting. We're going to summarize, like, the first half or so of this because it's mostly just a, uh, like, revisit of what's wrong with the current system. Uh, but we'll just hop right in. So basically, uh, this first part is written by V. Uh, the main purpose of Beacons is to allow massively increasing your production in the late game while being uh, more than just a module or a faster machine. Uh, to make use of Beacons, you need to adjust your building layout for them. Beacons succeed in this role, but there's some problems, right? So we aren't so sure that resulting layouts are all that interesting, something that both of us and a lot of players have said many times. So this is a standard 12 beacon layout here, and essentially it's the uh, best can. Uh, compute performance. It's not very space efficient though, and it's costing on both construction materials and power draw. Uh, but this is what it looks like in map view. It is super easy to route belts through though, since you have all the space. You can do this. You can do uh, you, you can do some belt weaving if you close these up a little bit. You can go through the middle here. Uh, so the advantage of this is it's obviously more beacons, which means faster, but it's also more space to route belts. And then this is, like I said, of course, what it looks like in map view. And there's a few small variations, like you can scoot in these beacons a little bit if you want, but that doesn't really do a whole lot. Maybe slightly more space efficient, but not even that much. Uh, and then we come down to what I would say is really the standard, at least in my play, is the 8 beacon layout. I very rarely use 12 beacons, uh, but 8 beacon is, I mean, that's a go-to, right? Like if you've used beacons, if, if you've built any sort of larger base, you know this. You know what this is, 8 beacon layout, like this is the go-to, the golden standard here. Uh, the other option being alter, uh, alternating rows of uh, machines and beacons, which is what this is, the 8 beacon. It's cost efficient um, for gain ratio. It's space efficient as well, much more so than 12 beacon. And not much space for belts, though, is the downside, which you can still get creative with it. But yeah, you are a little bit limited on the belt space. Right, so the problem is this that this is only two designs, right? If, if you want to actually optimize the use of beacons and get the best out of them you can, you're basically stuck with this. Anything less, and well, you're just not getting the whole benefit, and there aren't really any other layouts that actually benefit the machines as much as the 8 and 12 beacon do. And this has been the case forever, right? Beacons have basically worked exactly the same ever since uh, I've played with them. So the ideas, there were a few ideas here. So the first one being beacon overload, which is what is in uh, the space exploration mod by Arendelle, right? Uh, basically, it causes any machines affected by more than a single beacon to shut down. This means that the 12 beacon, 8 beacon, or any other beacon layout are just strictly impossible. Uh, with a normal beacon range, you would still do the inverse of the 12 design, where it's like one beacon in the middle where the assembler would normally be, and then it's surrounded by 12 or 8 uh, machines, right? Uh, but then you have the problem of how you actually feed all those machines. Uh, when trying to beacon, uh, when trying beacon overlord, it feels fresh at first. Uh, but then it kind of just goes away, the freshness out of that, because the problem is that there's not much flexibility in the beacon arrangement, particularly you're just building beacons in a grid, which avoids overlap, so it's not much more interesting than the base game. As you can see, here's an example of that, right? Uh, where things get more varied is with the wide area beacon from SpaceX. Uh, so basically, this is just a very large coverage area is my understanding. Uh, this gets rather inconvenient to the tile as you need to avoid overlapping machines with multiple beacons. Aside, the entire build is dictated by the range of the beacon, so it is almost always clustered around one beacon or a shoreline. So there's some pictures here uh, we can take a look at. So like here's the beacon. It's kind of hard to see, but this one, and it covers like all of this, but it's just one beacon, uh, which is... Yeah. I mean, like maybe it's more interesting, but it's only one beacon, so in a way it's not more interesting because basically your goal at that point is to just get as many machines around it as possible, which is obviously a different challenge. But once you figure it out, then it's kind of just the same over and over. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, close out of this. We'll just go here and then <laughs> resize the full screen. And 
uh, we come down to hidden beacons from built in beacons. And if I recall, yeah, this is actually a mod by V. I was going to say, if I recall, this is a mod by the, the V made uh, quite a long time. Or, yeah, quite a long time ago, three years ago, four years ago. And uh, I remember him discussing this with me. And this is a decent solution for what mods can do. Uh, basically, it adds production structures which simulate being fully beacon and full speed productivity modules for them. Um, and this is a decent solution, like I said, for what is actually able to be done with mods. However, there are some limitations with what you can do with mods. And V goes in to say the result of this is that factories never used to transition into improving production rates by layout changes other than uh, routing in more belts, which can be seen both as a negative and a positive. On one hand, you still have all possibilities as in the earlier stages and to think more belts too is great, but at the same time, it doesn't introduce anything new. Right, so you basically just eliminate the actual physical structure of the beacons, uh, but generally the result in terms of like the result, the impact on the machine is the same. Uh, however, one new thing it does is uh, that it becomes more is that it becomes viable to directly insert items between machines, right? Because you don't have the beacons in the way. But so that's all like currently what we have now. The problem is is there is quite a lot of mod limitations, and this part is by Arendelle that. Uh, neither of us imagined that our mods would be the right solution for the base game. We were aware of shortcomings, but mods are very limited in what they can do with beacons and 1.1. So, you know, there's been some other mods out there that did different things. Uh, however, it would kind of require like actual changes to the game engine itself to be able to do anything else. Even with the context of SpaceX, beacon overload wasn't the solution that Arendelle wanted. It was the sub uh, best solution that they could come up with, though, with the modding uh, limitations. And then basically it goes in to say these limitations aren't a problem of if we can just change the game engine but we can't take the game engine for every idea like they can't just change the whole engine for every single thing they want to do right uh however uh boss kid reached out to them and i guess had uh made some changes so we go down to the solution our dreams were always in the idea of diminishing returns the more beacons you would surround a machine with the less effect uh each of them would have right diminishing returns so there are some kind of questions and doubts that were in place right are we sure this is uh really strictly better or are we just trading one flawed system for another at least we know the flaws of the current system and it's not that bad uh when it be worse that it's more difficult to calculate the result affecting your head and if it's not linear we don't have time to implement something we're unsure about and until 1.0 the negatives seem to outweigh the potential positives of making changes but the dream was always in the back of our minds primarily me and Arendelle in fact we were so notorious with it that when Bosque was refactoring some parts of the vegan effect code he did it in a way which would allow something like this just in case it was desired eventually which was a super kind of nice gift for V and Arendelle to discover uh, because now they can do it. And Arendelle whipped out uh, his proposal. The effect transmission being the square root of the beacon count. Buffering the base transmission effect from 50%, 0.5, which is what it currently is, uh, and then adding in quality scaling for effect transmission. I've tested it and finalized the results. So uh, yeah, now we get into the actual changes. So what are these changes? Um, so story behind the numbers. So this is kind of quite a bit, but originally the uh, idea from Arendelle is the square root calculation, but they imagine the buffing beacons from 0.5 transmission to one uh, in part because it's a nice number, right? And that it is. So on top of that, by making beacons less crazy and high counts, we could allow them to scale with increasing quality as well. Uh, which is really nice because in Friday Facts, they mentioned that uh, in a previous Friday Facts, this one here for quality, they mentioned that beacon quality only decreases their energy consumption with higher quality, which is fine, actually, because it does, you know, make you require a ton of power. Uh, but having the actual scaling of the uh, like effect of them is really, really great with quality. Like, that's something I really want to see. I, I really wish they would do the same with like uh, cargo wagons. <laughs> It's the last time I'll, okay, maybe it's not the last time I'll harp on that, but uh, I guess I'm becoming the uh, quality cargo wagon person uh, where V and Arendelle were the beacon people for change. Um, but uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, they go on to say here that especially because, you know, belts were buff with four times uh, with item stacking and the new belt and things, it seemed reasonable to actually allow the beacons to get better with quality. Uh, 
so if he quickly came to the solution that a two times uh, buff is insufficient and low beacon amounts still feel weak while higher numbers are also nerfed uh and figured to try to double it again to four times and apparently this was exactly what arendelle had in mind uh however uh, when i was wrapping up the changes and preparing to present final boss Kovrex, i made sheets and grass uh i felt silly that i still haven't realized the square root of 16 beacons is four <laughs> so if we buff beacons by four times it means all builds with less than 16 beacons get buffed this felt like it's obviously too much so i settled on three times which results in transmission power of 1.5 so the the final is uh three times here for this right where it's either four times a new time buff the quality scaling need to be brought back down a bit so instead of one to 2.5 buff with quality like on most other things the transmission strength scales from 1.5 to 2.5 for beacons which is still great uh they still do reduce their power draw too which is really great uh, one of the best things to make quality at this point i think i was almost in tears to see how beautiful the values turn out so we can see here so on the right we have a graph here we have a table uh, this is the 1.1 effect is currently what we have uh, the 2.0 effect the 2.0 legendary beacon effect uh, the comparison and then the comparison with legendary right and we can kind of uh, see uh, this is 1.1 effect straight line 2.0 effect like this and then 2.0 legendary like this uh, now this is interesting i mean v says the change is surprisingly minor for existing factories machines affected by eight beacons will in fact perform six percent faster while machines get 12 beacons get 13 percent slower that's amazing because in these base game remains almost the same we get buffs uh we've always wanted and quality allows even more progression um so this is interesting i do want to preface this with saying i have no problem with these changes <laughs> like this is not a this is not a complaint i don't have a problem with these changes i'm really glad to see a change uh overall i think it's pretty good especially with quality because i'm going to be using quality i'm going to be building mega bases and having quality beacons be so powerful is going to be fantastic for me however uh i don't see a huge difference i'm gonna be honest like obviously there's a difference but so so really so where, where we see the difference is uh, that if we basically if we compare 1.1 to 2.0 effect so all the way up until um all the way up until like what well, you can see that that uh one and up till like nine basically is better right you can see all these numbers with 2.0 all this is better so four beacons um you know this, this is just going to be better however uh after eight and it is actually worse with the 2.0 effect right 12 beacons is actually worse than um is actually worse right than than the 12 beacons in 1.1 but what i'm getting at is like isn't eight beacons still just going to be the best thing to use <laughs> like it, it seems like uh it's i mean because it's better it's actually better than what we have now so like it, it does it does what they want but also kind of not it seems like because you can have better like you, you you can get better results with four or with less beacons than you used to be able to however less beacons is still not in any way better than more beacons unless you're comparing 8 to 12 which some i guess maybe some people use 12 beacon layouts all the time i almost never do so this has almost no impact on me uh now 16 beacons is significantly worse uh i so, so so like this would impact oil i guess would be one thing if you don't use legendary or uh like like legendary quality beacons uh in 2.0 then then oil will be a lot worse because you would 16 beacon like oil or or like ledge or uh foundries and stuff that are like five times five uh five by five building uh, so you would need quality to actually get that to be back up to par or better than what 1.1 was but for like anything else the eight beacon line is still just better it's still just the best solution uh, because i mean nine beacon is is better but it, but it was better in 1.1 anyway uh so you, you would want to avoid like anything above eight until you get legendary and then obviously it's much better uh, but if you just stick with the eight beacon layout it, you, you kind of just actually have things even better than you did uh so i don't know like that's just my thought like I said, i'm not complaining like i don't mind this i'll take better beacons <laughs> um and i think in some cases this will maybe 
uh, give more creativity because there may be some cases I've not done the math. The math is a bit harder now, uh, but there may be some cases where it's actually more efficient to just add another machine with less beacons than it is to uh, have an eight beacon with less machines. I know that's like, I maybe said that wrong, right? So like if you have eight machines making something, making the same thing, and eight beacons, an eight beacon layout on it, it may be more efficient to have like, I don't know, I'm just throwing out numbers, 12 machines with like a six beacon layout or a four beacon layout, uh, then adding a ninth machine with an eight beacon layout. These are just random numbers. I know the math doesn't really probably work out that way, but there, there may be things where if you crunch the numbers, it is actually more efficient to do less machines with less beacons than more machines with eight beacons. Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, with that, but and when I say efficient, I mean efficient for like power or UPS, uh, maybe. But anyway, there's that. So the results, I mean, these are the results. But the results, uh, using beacons feels actually impactful, even if you place just a few of them. And space stations is especially important, as that's typically when you want to increase your production to launch lots of rockets. As productivity models decrease this uh, machine speed with the old system, the first two beacons only get the machine back to 100% crafting speed. At that point, you uh, consciously know that you made an upgrade thanks to increased productivity, uh, but it doesn't really feel as exciting when the perceived speed is roughly the same. Now, because a single beacon has three times the effect, that is more than enough to break through the negative uh, effect of productivity, which feels much better. So what they did achieve here, and what I think part of what they wanted to achieve was just they made less beacons feel better, right? Is I think part of the issue was like up until eight beacons, or at least with like two or three or four beacons uh, in 1.1, it didn't really feel that useful. Uh, but now it actually does, right? Because they are significantly more powerful in 2.0 with less beacons than it would be in 1.1. So you can see like, you know, one one beacon is actually making these pretty fast even with productivity modules. So I think maybe that's what they're, they're getting at here is that, you know, if maybe if you're just got beacons and you're a little low on materials, uh, that it is advantageous to design builds with like one or two beacons in mind rather than just waiting it out for eight beacons because the impact of a couple beacons is powerful enough to where you actually would want to use less than eight in, in some cases. Maybe not in the final result, but at least going up to that point. And you can see uh, this is a circuit build with 24% productivity and 50% speed just with a few beacons, right? Which is awesome. Uh, in some situations, it's not just about being able to afford beacons, but the building space is limited. So high tech beacons are a natural fit for places like space platforms, right? So that's a great point. Uh, this is great on space platforms. Also, efficiency modules are super good. Uh, like now, I mean, they always reduce your energy, but uh, I think it could be even more effect effective now, especially with space platforms. Uh, and, you know, V kind of goes in to say that a single beacon with uh, green models can actually drop the energy of a machine significantly, and it gets obviously crazy with uh, quality. All machines in the above screenshot have negative 80% energy consumption. So these are some super efficient machines, even with all these speed modules, right? Uh, that, that they're taking hardly any energy on the space platform, which is what you would want, right? It's a kind of a limited space, expensive to build. Uh, and then we go down here. So this is kind of what I was saying earlier. Uh, that due to the size they can, so this is for foundries, they can be reached by more beacon 16 for a 5x5 five five tall foundry, which increases their already crazy craft speed a bit too much. The diminishing returns make these differences more reasonable. So before quality beacons, uh, then yeah, the 16 beacons is not that great for foundries. Uh, however, it gets really insane with quality. Trading a few beacons for a machine next to one another is probably going to result in some new possibilities for UPS, which is kind of what I was saying too. Uh, just a minute ago is that like there may be cases where for UPS um, for super super optimizers like myself and others that uh, you know it may be better to add another machine with less beacons than continue with more machines with eight beacons or something uh, but once you do full quality I mean this is absolutely insane so the knowledge of a beacon rework was actually kind of out about in the wild several days ago uh, Corex accidentally or maybe purposely, but I think accidentally kind of leaked it uh, on the uh, on the Discord, on the Factorio Discord, or where he showed a screenshot of like how fast a foundry build could be. I think it was a foundry, 
and people noticed that the speed from the beacons was actually like way higher than it should be compared to 1.1 and that was because of these changes right and the result was insane like the crafting speed was I don't know, it was like 209 crafting speed or something, which is absolutely wild. It was producing like like hundreds of items a second. Like it, it, it can get absolutely wild. So yeah, once you get quality, I mean, this isn't cheap. The, the quality items are super, super expensive to get, these legendary ones. Uh, so this is kind of what you could get super, super, super late game though. And the conclusion essentially is that Kovrex has been annoying all the surroundings, including Kovrex. Uh, I think I said, I don't know if I said Kovrex. V has been uh, annoying all the surroundings, including Kovrex, by constantly talking about the beacon uh, mechanics on off for about seven years. It got to the point where if I brought it up, I'd get the reaction, oh, you with the beacons again. <laughs> and frankly, I don't blame them. <laughs> so I guess uh, I, I guess now I'm going to be the, oh, you with the cargo wagons again. Because uh, my complaint is that I think quality should make cargo wagons be able to carry more items. But that's a different subject. So in the last months, I had already abandoned hope that we could ever implement this as the expansion seemed to be getting feature complete, which I mean, this in and of itself is great news. Uh, but basically, Arendelle had the same wish, uh, which is good. And once Boss Kid did the code, it only took a few days for them to implement. And the result is that in 2.0, maximizing uh, beacon count will still generally be good practice to have things produce quickly and save on computer performance. However, there will now be a lot more room for creativity and with quality return on investment comes into question more. Uh, in general, this can be regarded as a buff to beacons, which should help you progress quicker, especially in the earlier stages of the game, which again improves space age being less tedious and more interesting. And this is what the code looks like. So what makes it super exciting is it's a very simple so-called uh, profile table in Lua. And what this means is that it allows mods to do a bunch more. So this means mods can revert beacons back to 1.1. If you just don't like the changes in 2.0, uh, a mod can change it back to 1.1 or change basically anything they want. If they want to buff it even more, if they want to change how they diminish, uh, this is the, what, what the code looks like and it can actually be modified for mods. So as always, the devs are, are just super modder friendly, which is, you know, we've all always loved and is, is awesome. Uh, so in 2.0, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of beacon mods to make them do all kind of different crazy things. And then probably there will be one to bring them back to 1.1. So that's pretty much it. Uh, v just goes on to say, you know, some really nice things. He's happy to have Arendelle by his side. And, uh, you know, I think they work pretty closely together here and they have a lot of the same ideas. And that is that. So I would love to hear what you guys think of this. Uh, are you a fan of this? Are you not a fan of this? I did see very, I saw pretty mixed opinions on the forum and Reddit replies. I definitely saw some really positive opinions on this. I also saw people saying this doesn't really do anything or they don't like it. Um, so I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, if you are excited though and enjoy this, a like is definitely appreciated. And uh, if you are new, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with future content. And like I said, personally me, I don't dislike it. I think it'd be nice more uh, more faster stuff is, is always good to me so i'll be heading straight for those legendary uh, quality beacons overall i don't know that it does a lot like i said i already went into that uh with eight beacons basically still just being the best thing you can do uh in my opinion but i think maybe maybe it'll be a little different when i play with it i might find some other designs for for less beacons um but that's gonna do it thank you all so much for watching i appreciate it and until next time i look forward to seeing you all and do take care